first visited Brahma, who ignored him, leading Bhrigu to curse him that he would not be widely worshipped. Next, he visited Shiva, who was also inattentive, and Bhrigu cursed him that people would worship him only in the form of a lingam. Finally, he visited Vishnu, who was resting. Bhrigu kicked Vishnu in the chest to awaken him, but Vishnu, instead of becoming angry, humbly apologized to Bhrigu. So this is called Ardhanari, where he is half man and half woman. So he made her a part of himself just to see what the devotee will do. Now, Bhrigu made himself into a bee and went around only the right leg. So Shiva <laughs> and Parvati, both of them laughed and he said, they said, this is not a man, he is too feminine. What he is dedicated to is everything to him. He is blind to everything else. If you are not aware of this already, Shiva in yoga is seen as the… not as a god, but as the Adi yogi. That means he is the first yogi. And the Adi guru, that means the first guru. And today, yoga as a science, yoga as a system, yoga as a technology for inner well-being is available to us only because of the feminine play, that is, Parvati compelled him to teach. By himself, he would have never done that. So because he became the first guru, naturally he developed disciples and devotees. Of the first seven disciples that he taught yoga to, who are known as Saptarishis, of these Saptarishis, the whole of southern mysticism has come from Agastya Muni. He is everything to us here because everything that we know is from him. He was his Shiva's direct disciple. Another disciple was Bhrigu. Bhrigu became intensely devout about Shiva, that he became very feminine because devotion is feminine. He became a great devotee of Shiva. So every day he comes and he wants to do, three times he wants to circumambulate Shiva. That means he wants to do pradakshina three times. He doesn't start his day without doing that. And uh, Parvati is right here. By now she is also a fully enlightened being. But he ignores her completely and he goes only around Shiva, never around both of them. So Parvati felt little irked by this. So one day she sat close to him. Then Bhrigu came and uh, there was no way to go around Shiva without going around Parvati, so he asked her to move. <laughs> this is the way of a devotee. They are not logical people, very feminine. But they are intense. Parvati said, why should I move? He said, I will go only around the Lord, not you. Bhrigu saw there was not enough space for him to go around Shiva alone, so he converted himself into a mouse and went around Shiva alone, ignoring Parvati or excluding Parvati from the circumambulation. So Shiva was just amused by this tiff that is going on between his wife and his devotee. <laughs> so he looked at the whole thing and he grabbed Parvati and put her on his lap just to see what he will do. How is he going to circumambulate Shiva without circumambulating Parvati now because she is sitting on his lap? Then Bhrigu transformed himself into a bird and went around just Shiva. Then Shiva was completely 
amused by this devotion, very pleased and also amused by the way the devotee is expressing himself and the way Parvati is getting fired up because of this discrimination. <laughs> so Shiva said, okay, let's see what you will do and he just merged her into a part of himself. Shiva has become half Parvati and half, half woman, half man. This is half man, half woman. If one knows how to nurture this one to its fullest extent, this will become half man, half woman and that is how it will be. So this is called Ardhanari where he is half man and half woman. So he made her a part of himself just to see what the devotee will do. Now Brigu made himself into a bee and went around only the right leg. So Shiva <laughs> and Parvati, both of them laughed and he said, they said, this is not a man, he is too feminine. What he is dedicated to is everything to him, he is blind to everything else. So he just buzzed around the right leg, <laughs> refusing to go around the left leg <laughs> because this is Parvati. <laughs> then this childish way of devotion of Brigu was amusing and nice but at the same time Shiva did not want Brigu to be lost in his devotion and miss the ultimate nature of the existence. So he got into the yogic posture of Siddhasana where there was no way for him to circumambulate his leg or any other part of his body. If he has to do it, he has to do it for both these principles of feminine and masculine. So this is how this body became like this, that it is half male and half female or masculine and feminine in equal proportions. If one knows how to nurture this one, both will be fully active and alive in every human being. If we let these two parts of us reverberate as intensely as the other, each one of us can be a one hundred percent man and one hundred percent woman within ourselves. The whole science of yoga is based on this, that you should not miss either the masculine or the feminine in you because any one of them will be a lopsided life. Now when we say yoga, we are talking about a dimension which is all-inclusive. It is not an exercise or a process for creating health. It is about ultimate well-being of the human being in which you cannot exclude any aspect of life. It is about attaining to a dimension beyond all dimensions. It is about a system and a method to use your own existing system as a ladder to the divine, to make your body, to make your mind, to make your emotion and your energies a ladder to the divine, to make yourself into your stepping stone towards your ultimate nature. Brigu is an ancient sage in Hindu history known for his wisdom and significant contributions to various Hindu texts and traditions. Here are some key aspects about Brigu. Saptarishi, seven great sages. Brigu is one of the Saptarishi, the seven great sages of Hinduism. 
These sages are regarded as the patriarchs of Vedic tradition, responsible for spreading knowledge and preserving the ancient wisdom of the Vedas. Each of these sages plays a crucial role in the formation of Hindu religious and spiritual traditions. Bhrigu Samhita One of the most remarkable contributions attributed to sage Bhrigu is the Bhrigu Samhita, an ancient archaeological treatise. The Bhrigu Samhita is considered one of the oldest books on astrology and is believed to contain detailed horoscopes and predictions for every individual who ever lived or will live. According to legend, Bhrigu used his divine powers to foresee the future and recorded these predictions in this massive text. The Bhrigu Samhita is unique in that it is said to provide specific guidance for individuals based on their karmic patterns. Legend of Testing the Trinity Trimurti A well-known legend involving Bhrigu illustrates his role in testing the Hindu trinity of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. According to the story, Bhrigu was asked with determining which of these three gods was the greatest. He first visited Brahma, who ignored him, leading Bhrigu to curse him that he would not be widely worshipped. Next, he visited Shiva, who was also inattentive and Bhrigu cursed him that people would worship him only in the form of a lingam. Finally, he visited Vishnu, who was resting. Bhrigu kicked Vishnu in the chest to awaken him, but Vishnu, instead of becoming angry, humbly apologized to Bhrigu for any discomfort his chest may have caused. Pleased with Vishnu's humility and patience, Bhrigu declared him the greatest of the three. This legend highlights the virtues of humility and patience in the face of provocation. Descendants and Lineage Bhrigu is considered the progenitor of the Bhrigu lineage known as the Bhargavas. His descendants include many prominent sages and warriors such as Jamadagni and Parushurama, the sixth avatar of Vishnu. The Bhargava clan is known for its contributions to various fields including Vedic knowledge, martial arts and medicine. Role in Hindu scriptures Bhrigu appears in several important Hindu scriptures including the Mahabharata, Ramayana and the Puranas. In these texts, he is often depicted as a wise sage who plays a crucial role in various myths and legends. For instance, in the Mahabharata, Bhrigu's descents are involved in significant events that shape the narrative of the epic. In the Puranas, Bhrigu is often mentioned in the context of his contributions to the spread of Vedic knowledge and his interactions with the gods. Bhrigu's significance in Hindu history extends beyond his role as a sage. He is a symbol of wisdom, justice and the enduring power of spiritual knowledge.